Hi, so my name is Robert Florence. I'm the lab director for the Soil Plant Pest Center, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about soil sampling strategies and nutrient management. And so I thought I'd first start off with a, a attention grabber, um, which answers the question, why should you soil test? So you should soil test because it will save you money and you'll apply lime, fertilizer, or manure where it's needed at the right rate. So a quick example that I wanted to pencil out was, let's say you have a, a spring pasture default application of 315 pounds of triple 19 per acre and one ton of lime per acre. But if you soil test and it says you only need nitrogen, then you just save $44 per acre if you bought ESN, which is what uh, the place I called was offering. And if you don't need lime, then you just saved $168 per acre. So it just goes to show that that, that uh, input cost of soil testing can really save you per acre, right? So if it's $15 per test, it covers five acres. You soil test once every three years. It works out to be $1 per acre of input cost could really save you uh, a lot of money on a per acre basis. So I'm gonna talk more about soil sampling strategies, I'm mostly focusing on timing, depth of samples, and then where and how to sample. So for timing, it's very important for a few reasons. So one is seasonal variability. A lot of times if you sample between the fall and the spring, you'll see pH and potassium differences uh, between the, just those two sampling times. And so it's very important to kind of minimize that seasonal variability between your results um, to pick either a certain number of fields and to have them only be fall sampling fields and the other set of fields to be only spring, but try not to mix one field with spring and fall sampling. Try to always have it be a fall field and the other fields be a spring field. And another important part about timing uh, comes into play with nitrate, especially if you're looking to side dress nitrate to corn. So uh, taking a nitrate sample is mostly done when corn is at the six leaf stage or about a foot tall. And you would also want to do it, uh, do a zero to 12 inch sample as opposed to a zero to six inch sample because the nitrate is mobile in the soil. So it also kind of helps point out a difference in timing and depth when it comes to a mobile nutrient such as nitrate and also uh, in relation to crop growth. Another important part about timing is logistics, right? You want to give yourself enough time to know what you need to apply and to give yourself a chance to shop around for the best deal. And also if you need to schedule anything with your fertilizer dealer um, or your local co-op uh, to go ahead and get on that schedule list, right? So you're not the last in line and it may be too late to get what you need. So that's why timing is very important. So depth is important, especially in no-till fields, because you can get stratification of immobile nutrients. So in this particular example, um, this researcher uh, in Wisconsin looked at soil test results as if you'd only sampled zero to two inches, two to four, four to six, and six to eight, in both a no-till system and a moldboard plow field. And what it shows is that in a moldboard plow field or a till field, um, at all, you really mix those nutrients in. So the concentration of the nutrients is the same throughout that plow layer. But in a no-till system, the surface, the zero to two inch surface will be really high in nutrients because that's where they're applied to. And as you go deeper down, you'll have lower levels of those nutrients. So let's say you go to a field, and instead of taking your zero to six inch sample, you take a zero to four inch, you may get a higher number than what you would have your results may say you have a higher soil test value and you would get a lower fertilizer recommendation than what you may actually need. So taking that full zero to six inch sample and being consistent about it is very important in no-till fields, more so than tilled fields. So where and how to sample a field is very important. And there are several strategies uh, about sampling a field. You can just sample the whole field, right? Maybe it's five acres or less, you take many, many cores throughout the, that five acres and let it represent the average of the field. Maybe you know that there's a difference within that field. Maybe you know there's a soil texture change and you can use that to differentiate parts of the field. Or maybe using your, uh, your yield maps, you may see that one part of the field just has a higher yield than another. And so you make a natural delineation of this is 
one part of the field might maybe higher yielding and this part is having trouble. And so you would sample those differently. Or you can be even more intense and do a grid area or grid point. So you would uh, put a grid around the field and then you can sample within the grid and call that your soil, uh, soil test average for that two and a half acre, five acre grid. Or you can sample around a point of that grid. Just make sure if you sample around a point of the grid that you do scatter your points around that point. It's not like a five foot diameter cluster around that one point in that acre. You do wander around a little bit uh, in that grid. So the number of cores is important uh, for two particular main reasons. So one is, you know, soils are not very uniform, right? As we've applied fertilizer and lime to them, as we've tilled them and put crops in, uh, that there's a uh, we start to have a lot more variability in pH and nutrients out in the field. And so the more cores you take, right, the more subsamples you take of that field or that uh, management zone, the lower your plus or minus your error is going to be just from the variability in the field, right? So if you go out there and you take one core to represent five acres, it could be you know, plus or minus 20% of the mean or the average of that field. But if you take 20 cores, you may be plus or minus 5 or 10% of the true average of the field, which gives you a better reliability of when you go to apply fertilizer, you're applying close to the right amount. And it also helps out from a ability to tell trends over time, right? If you have a, if you take two or three cores per five acres, you have a high percent error around the, the mean of your field. You can't really tell if you have a trend going up or down just because the the error around that sample itself is so large. But if you're able to uh, take many cores per sample, your percent error gets much smaller just from the inherent variability of that soil. You can really start to tease out, is my soil or my soil levels changing over time or are they staying the same? So once we have our soil results, how about nutrient management? So three main things to consider for nutrient management are to consider your sources and equipment, right? Whether you have solid, liquid, or manure and the equipment to spread those, right? Putting out an agronomic or environmentally friendly rate depending on your cropping system. And then also efficient timing, putting the nutrients out when they're needed. So for nutrient inputs, consider your sources, right? If you um, are just gonna use uh, straight fertilizers, into a, a normal row cropping system or pasture system. Uh, your, your rates may be different than if you're in a, an animal forage system where you're having to get rid of manure or animal waste. Yeah, right, your timing of that would be more based upon your holding capacity and when state regulations will allow you to spread manure to fields. So you have a bit more logistics to work out in the animal forage system as you would in just a straight fertilizer row crop system. So the timing of nutrients is also very important. So I haven't talked a lot about pH, but when you put lime down, it it's, uh, can be very important to put it down as soon as you know you need it, right? So pH can control the availability of a lot of nutrients, and it can also control toxicity, right? If you have too low of a pH, you may run into aluminum toxicity troubles. So if a soil test says you need lime, you should apply it as soon as you know you need it, right? And as soon as you can safely get out into that field to apply it. And the application should last more than one year. Right? You don't have to apply lime every year, but you would want to apply it as soon as you know you need it. And then if a subsequent soil test say to keep applying it, then keep on applying it. And also keep in mind, you want to lime to your most limiting uh, crop pH target, right? So if you're doing corn beans now, but you know three years from now, you're going to go to alfalfa or maybe a sweet clover, you want to lime for that higher pH rate for the alfalfa or sweet clover so that uh, the pH is right whenever you do get to that point to put the alfalfa on the ground. For phosphorus, potassium, and most microbes, they're immobile in the soil, so you can put them down once per year if they are needed. And then you can just repeat that rate each year until soil test levels are adequate or until uh, they're no longer needed. For nitrogen, sulfur, and boron, they're more mobile nutrients, so nitrogen and sulfur more so than boron, um, but you would uh, want to apply those closer to planting. And then for nitrogen, you want to split apply it if possible, right? Put some down at planting or in the spring, and then put some down later in season or in the fall if it's a, a, a forage crop. 
for the nutrient inputs. The rate is also very important. So the optimal rate of P or K for, um, for row crops or for forages is based upon your soil test index. So on this graph I have here, I have like your soil test index on the x-axis going from low, medium to high, and then kind of relative yield uh, on the y-axis kind of graphing out the yield response. So you can see at a, a low soil test index, there's a high probability of a yield response. At a medium soil test level, there's a moderate probability of a yield response. At a high or very high, there's very low to no probability of a yield response. The optimum nitrogen rate is going to be based on the crop and maybe the yield average of that crop. So note it's not your yield goal, right? It's your yield average. What's your past three to five year average? And maybe you want to go 10% higher than that if you are trying to improve it, but it should be based more on the yield average of that field and not uh, a yield goal. For the optimum rate of secondary and micronutrients, it's more based on specific crops and soil test values. And I have a, a few list of resources below that you can visit to help further explain all these because it would be um, a much longer talk if we talked about the optimum rates for all the nutrients or for all the crops. Uh, remember we also have outputs, right? So we have nutrient inputs, but as we remove grain from a field or as we remove forage from a field, we also have outputs where we're taking nutrients away from that field. And so I just have two things I wanted to show to uh, bring light to it so it's fresh in your mind. So one is an example from Iowa where there's a corn and soybean crop removal rate. So we can see that uh, in this example, corn can remove anywhere from 27 to 66 pounds of P2O5 equivalent per acre. And it can also remove anywhere from 21 to 47 pounds of K2O5 equivalent per acre. So I uh, just wanted to show that uh, we do remove nutrients from the field and that there's a lot of variability in how much nutrients are removed. So don't try to always use default values. Sometimes you may want to actually uh, take a grain sample and have it analyzed for the nutrients in it. So if you are doing a crop removal rate uh, system where you're applying what you're removing off, you have a better idea of what you're actually removing as opposed to a default value. And then you may also run into luxury update uh, as well. So I have a quick uh, table of uh, pounds of P205 applied at 0, 40, and 100 pounds per acre. And then just the grain removal in that soybean. And we can see that as you apply more phosphorus, uh, at all but one site listed, there was an increase in uh, phosphorus remove per bushel from those, those soybeans. So the key takeaways are when sampling, plan ahead, pay attention, and take enough cores to represent the average. When applying nutrients, consider your sources and apply at proper rate and time. And thanks. Have a good day.